Fox Sports. We are Fox. We are Wisconsin. It's Corey Hart Bobblehead Day here at Miller Park. The skies are blue. The roof is open. Fans making their way into the stadium. Brewer fans hoping that the crew can avoid a series sweep here against their arch rivals from St. Louis. Gene Segura hoping to keep up his strong start. Ditto for Carlos Gomez, the leading hitter in the NL. And Marco Estrada hoping to quiet the Cardinal bats. Marco hoping to bounce back after a rough start against the Pirates earlier this week. Marcotte Cannon and Jerry Augustine back at the stadium. And some good moments for the Brewers yesterday. Offensively, Augie, they put up some runs. Yes, they did. I'll tell you what. Against Adam Wainwright, who has been very stingy, haven't given up many home runs so far this year, went out and swung the bat very well. What they did is got into good hitters' counts, got good pitches to hit, and put the ball in play. Gene Segura with his fourth homer, then in the sixth inning, Carlos Gomez with a bomb to left center. And then in the eighth, how about this, a little small ball. Nori Aoki with a squeeze bunt, scoring Jeff Bianchi. Some encouraging video there, Jerry Augustine, but looking at the numbers, the series has not gone very well. I'll tell you what, when Brewers were playing well, they were scoring the runs early in the game. The Cardinals have kind of turned the tables on them. Would be very good today. Marco hold this Cardinal team down, and the Brewers get off to a good start. Yeah, and the first three innings, a very telling number there, 11 to 3 in favor of the Cardinals. Well, Marco Estrada on the hill today, hoping to get a win for the crew. Brick Kashan and Bill Schroeder breaking down the pitching matchup when we come back. Save big money on all your home improvement needs at Menards. By Miller Lite, it's not just a good time, it's Miller time. And by Toyota, let's go places. And by AT&T U-verse TV, check availability at 1-800-PICK-AT&T. Rethink possible. 
We're back at Miller Park. We're going to turn it over right now to our game announcers, Craig Kashan and Bill Schroeder, who have more on today's pitching matchup, guys. All right, Mark, thanks very much, and uh, great to have you aboard. Rock sporting the 1913 bow tie to honor the team today. Looking dapper, my friend. Yeah, well, the players are going to be dressed in the old-time uniforms. The uh, bow tie was quite the thing back in those days. I forgot my top hat, though. That's all right. That's all right. On camera, you look good right now. Trust me. <laughs> uh, let's talk about Marco Estrada. You know, Brewers are in a funk right now. The last time they were in a funk, back on April 14th, he was the starting pitcher in St. Louis, where the Brewers ended up winning that game and started a, a nine Nine-game winning streak kind of, kind of turned the tables a little bit. Had some success against the Cardinals. Yeah, and he, he pitched pretty well. Uh, three runs in six innings. You know, when Marco was able to minimize the damage and avoid the big inning, which he was able to do for the most part in that start against the Cardinals at Bush Stadium, he gave up two runs in the third and a home run in the fourth. One of the issues that Marco has had this year is giving up the long ball. Last time out against the Pirates, three home runs. A league leading ten long balls this year. If he's able to keep the ball in the ballpark today, look for that change up to be down in the strike zone and a good outing for Marco. Estrada against Jami Garcia. We've got first pitch on the way from Miller Park Brewers trying to get a W on the board here this weekend. Milwaukee Brewers, American Association jerseys from 1913 here today. So it's throwback day, way back to 1913. The Cardinals wearing their uniforms replica of that year as well. So it should be a fun, colorful day here at the ballpark as you take a good look at what the Cardinals are. a little more plainer with that logo there on that left sleeve. Our Pickley Wiggly starting lineup today for the St. Louis Cardinals. It's John Jay at the top of the order, Shane Robinson to follow, and Matt Holliday in the first inning. Then it's Craig Molina, Freeze, Descalso, Cosmo over at short, and the pitcher Jaime Garcia. And they will oppose today's starter for the Brewers, Marco Estrada on the hill for the second time this season against the Cardinals. A two and one record for Marco in his seventh start here this afternoon. He's given up the league leading 10 home runs. Good walk to strikeout ratio for Marco. Received the no decision early in the year at Bush Stadium against St. Louis. As you check out the Menards defense for Milwaukee, they've been pretty tight defensively as of late. Aramis Ramirez back in the lineup. A scheduled off day for Ramirez in yesterday's game. So Aramis Ramirez back at third today. And the 
Brewers shortstop features Aramis Ramirez. Of course, he had the day off yesterday back at third base for today's game. And our umpires today, Dale Scott, the crew chief out at second base, C.B. Buckner will be calling balls and strikes here in this afternoon's finale. This is the finale of a long four-game weekend series, and it has been all St. Louis. They have spoiled the home team over the last three days. In fact, the Brewers have lost four straight overall here at Miller Park as John Jay gets loose and gets ready to step into the batter's box here to face Marco Estrada. Uh, yesterday, a 7-6 to six win, a great battle between both teams, but the Cardinals prevail in that ninth inning. So we are ready for baseball here on this beautiful Sunday afternoon. And first pitch from Marco Estrada in for a strike. It was a wild game yesterday, and it's been a, a series that the Cardinals uh, came in here on Thursday night and have kind of nickel and dime the Brewers in a lot of cases in here a leadoff single very much in the same fashion they are just playing a, a very solid brand of baseball right now yeah big uh, home run for John Jay in yesterday's ball game against Gallardo but for the most part they've been singling the Brewers to death in this series a change up from Estrada and John Jay able to hook it into right field yeah he had a career high four RBIs yesterday including a three run home run and uh, just a big game for John Jay, of course. And then Shane Robinson set to follow right now. Shane Robinson, the right fielder today. Carlos Beltran gets the day off. Yeah, two to three games so far have could have gone either way. The Brewers made a nice comeback on Thursday night. A back and forth game yesterday, but yeah, the Cardinals just doing the little things late in the game to win. They're playing very good baseball right now. Well, Ron Renick, he made no bones about it after the game yesterday and this morning. He said right now St. Louis is just outplaying his Brewers. And they're outplaying just about everybody else. 19 and 11 to start play today. Along with Bill Shorter, Craig Kishan, Sophia Minnert with you here today. 63, partly sunny. It's great to have the roof open. It's been kind of a dreary midweek here in the Milwaukee area in the state of Wisconsin as well. Can't get rid of winter. But today looks like the middle of summer. Marco Estrada already working out of the stretch here after the first batter. A one and one count coming up to Shane Robinson. Shane Robinson in yesterday's game in that ninth inning singled, stole third, and wound up with the game winning run for St. Louis. Seems like. Every person, every player is chipping in for the Cardinals right now. They've won five straight. Yep, getting a start today in right field, giving Carlos Beltran a day off. Beltran has started just about every game, actually has appeared in all 30 games for St. Louis. And you figure if they need him, he's going to get a pinch hit opportunity late, late today. Estrada checks the runner at first again. St. Louis with their winning streak right now has jumped four and a half games ahead of Milwaukee in the Central Division. Earlier this week the Brewers were within a game of first half a game of first place. And uh, now that they've lost four straight the Cardinals a five game winning streak and you don't want to fall much further behind. That's for sure. This is a big game today for the Brewers. They never want to get swept but in particular you don't want to be swept by a division opponent at home. Cardinals have played pretty good baseball here at Miller Park over the last year plus year and a half. Started in the second half of 2011 Cardinals have uh, handled the Brewers pretty well here. And now Estrada walks the second batter Robinson so two aboard no one out to start the ball game a base hit and a walk issued by Estrada. Yeah, you don't see too many walks issued by Marco only seven walks before today. In 35 and the third innings to go along with 34 punch outs. The last thing you want to do is start the game with your leadoff hitter and second hitter on. And now having to face the middle of this Cardinal batting order. And holiday 262 four home runs one of those coming on Friday and it was a three run pop. And he really let loose on Friday night. Nice off speed pitch by Marco Estrada. 
Right, fastball, curveball, cutter, and changeup for Marco. That was a good curveball that time. Holiday's numbers against Milwaukee in his career. 321. The 0-1 is high. One and one now to the number three man in the order, Matt Holiday, the left fielder. Estrada waits two aboard here in the opening frame. And there's a strike delivered by Estrada. Yep, that's where you have to pitch Matt Holiday, right on that inside corner with good fastballs. And well, you figure this Cardinal lineup is going to be looking all speed all day from Marco. I would imagine that the fastball should be an effective pitch today. One two on the way. Good stop by Jonathan Lucroy, the Brewer catcher. I'll have a quick chat with Marco Estrada. Both of today's pitchers, Jaime Garcia and Marco Estrada, were born in Mexico. And ironically, today, this is the 37th time that two Mexican board pitchers have gone head to head, but the first time ever on Cinco de Mayo Day. So, and historic days, we celebrate the Mexican heritage and pride. Marco set to deliver the 2 2. Holiday hits it hard left field. Ryan Braun going back into the gap makes the catch. And the runner, John Jay, from second will tag and go to third. Yeah, effective pitch by Marco. Another fastball on the inside part of the plate. And Holiday jammed himself. Easy fly out to left. Take a look at our head and shoulders whiff. And it's Marco Estrada leading the team in strikeouts, and we expect to see some from Marco Estrada here in this game. Had more strikeouts and innings pitched last year. The effect of off-speed pitches, he gets ahead and then able to finish off a number of hitters with a high fastball that topped out at about 92. Doesn't throw hard, but effective getting the strikeouts. He needs one right here. 34 strikeouts on the season for Estrada. Here's Alan Craig, the cleanup hitter. And he starts him out with the ball down low. There's a look at the Brewer team leaders, Giovanni Gallardo with 26 just behind Estrada, then Kyle Loesch with 24. Jim Henderson on that list. The Brewer closer took a tough loss in yesterday's game. Kind of ironic how this homestand has gone. A great start against Pittsburgh, winning the first two games. Looked like they were set up for a sweep on Wednesday afternoon, but the Pirates came back to win that game, and then the Cardinals have done just about everything you could think of to win a game. Either jumped out in front and stayed there, jumped out in front, fell behind, and come back and win like yesterday. Man, for the most part, the Brewers have been scoring enough runs to win games. You remember that nine game winning streak it was really the pitching the starters and the bullpen that really carried the load now the offense is starting to come around and you know the pitching staff in a bit of a lull right now that's the way it goes I mean that's the way the season is going to develop for every team you can't count on one aspect of your your game all year long and on these three and zero counts and there Estrada hits for a strike these are these are the little moments that concern a manager a little bit. Marco Estrada, a slow start here in the opening frame, has got to dig deep to get out of this one. Cardinals with runners at first and third, one down here in the opening frame. Estrada working from behind in the count. Big swing and a miss. Another curveball by Estrada. Almost as if, if if I walk you, that's okay. Of course, Molina's on deck. That wouldn't be something that you would want. But there's his bread and butter, the changeup, and that's why he got the swing and a miss. Came out of his hand, looked like a fastball, and just didn't get there for Craig.
Full count pitch on the way from Estrada. Runner goes from first. This one fouled away. And Craig, a very good opposite field hitter. Matter of fact, his home run in yesterday's game came to right center. Stays on the baseball like most of the Cardinal hitters have in this series. Greg with his first home run of the season yesterday as you see the hits by direction for Craig. Mostly left and center this time he strikes out runner. Moves up to second base on the stolen base. But there are two down more importantly in a big strikeout for Estrada. They had two off speed pitches wrapped around a fastball and here it is again the change up and Craig. Swings right through it. Mark Lee to get back into the count with that changeup. He was at three and one, came back and got him on the change. You can see that overhead shot, the importance of getting that pitch over the plate. It can be down out of the strike zone, but as long as it's over the plate, they have a pretty good chance of getting a swing. Well, this is where the Cardinals have excelled all season long, runners in scoring position with two down. Talked about it on our Brewers Live pregame show. 364 in the season for the St. Louis Cardinals. Phenomenal number. And this is the situation that Yadier Molina is in right now. Second and third, two down. Yeah, there's only one way, one way that number is going to go. I mean, you're not going to expect to be able to maintain a batting average like that. That's incredible. But that's how well they're going right now. They're in a good stretch. And they're taking advantage of these opportunities. Molina pops one up, but it goes into foul territory. Look at the shoes that uh, Molina is wearing here today. Those are, are those 1913 throwback shoes? Can you imagine if a guy from 1913 saw those? <laughs> those are uh, pretty cool, huh? Those work for me, especially with those uniforms. I, li I like the contrast. <laughs> the 0-2. Ah. One and two now to the St. Louis Cardinals catcher. I guess as long as you have your team colors incorporated into your shoes, I guess it's okay, right? Love to know what kind of shoes they wore back in 1913, what those cleats looked like. They were all leather and very heavy. Not that I played back then, but that's what I heard. And the uniforms were all wool, so. You get into the middle of the summer with those uh, those heavy wool uniforms and those cleats like uh, like leather work boots. Right, the Rydells. Yeah, that's what they uh, are. Those are the cleats I wore in high school. I would imagine they were even worse back then. Here's the one-two to Molina. Nice stop by Lucroy. Runners have to stay. There's the shoes from the guys back in 1913 that Milwaukee Brewers from the American Association. That's a good team photo right there, isn't it? Yeah. Got the mats out there. Not too many relief pitchers in that group. I mean, you're a starter, and that was it. And you finished regardless. <laughs> Games weren't three and a half hours old back then either, were they? <laughs> Three and two now to Molina. That yeah, game has changed a lot since those days. They look pretty comfortable in that picture. I'm thinking it was probably about 50 degrees that day if they were in the, the Wolves. And Borchard Field having a good time. Yep. Here's the three two. And again, Molina stays alive. Boy, Estrada really having to work here in this inning. 26 pitches in the opening frame. And he's not done yet. And Molina feeling as though he missed a pretty good pitch to hit. Again, the payoff pitch. Swing and a miss, and Estrada got out of it. What a job by Marco Estrada. Two aboard, nobody out, and he strikes out the final two batters.
trying to get the Brewers back in the winning column. They've lost four straight here at Miller Park. And his Pickley Wiggly batting order looks like this. Dory Aoki back at the top of that order. Then it's Gene Segura and Ryan Braun for sure here in the first. Aramis Ramirez after the day off yesterday back at third. Then it's Weeks, Lucroy, Gomez, Betancourt at first base, and the pitcher Marco Estrada. And they will face a good one in Jaime Garcia this afternoon. They see his numbers four and three record in 10 starts against Milwaukee and earned run average under three. Got a no decision earlier this year at Bush Stadium. Seven innings, no runs against the Brewers in that no decision. And he is ready to throw to Nori Aoki to lead things off here for the Brewers. Thinking about bunting, but takes ball one from Garcia. Nice start to the young pitcher's career for Jaime Garcia. He faces Aoki at 278 this season. Garcia 37 and 24. And pitchers today with similar styles. Garcia with a very good changeup. He doesn't throw hard. And he throws a cut fastball. There it is. There's Garcia's numbers on the season. 12 walks and 28 strikeouts added to his numbers. And he's only allowed two home runs. So he keeps the baseball down. He keeps it in the ballpark. Here's the 3 1 to the Brewer leadoff hitter. Oki hits one in the gap right field. Did he get enough? Nope. It's going to hold up for Shane Robinson. Boy, that came off his bat pretty well. Now let's check out the Menards defense behind Jaime Garcia for the St. Louis Cardinals. Shane Robinson in right. Carlos Beltran gets the day off. Daniel Descalso gets a start. Leadoff hitter Matt Carpenter sits this one out, at least for the time being. Your Menards defense for the Cardinals. Beautiful afternoon for baseball here at Miller Park. Great to see the roof open. It was uh, dreary in the middle of the week again when the rains came back in. Gene Segura, the Brewers shortstop, bunts the ball, and it's ruled foul. So Segura will get another crack. Ruled foul by the home plate umpire, C.B. Buckner. As long as you're in that batter's box, one foot, and the ball hits you, or at least. Assuming that that's what happened. Maybe it was a double hit on the bat. Now let's check it out. Didn't think that it hit Segura. Well, if you're out of the batter's box and you bunt it, you're out. You can't hit a baseball when you're out of the batter's box, but not sure why that was foul. Better look here. I mean, that's a fair ball. It looks like it splashes fair. It looks like everything's legal there. No idea why that's a foul ball. Segura straight away center. And the catch made out there by John Jay. So two quick outs for Garcia. That'll bring up the Brewer slugger, Ryan Braun. I think that's what uh, Yadier Molina is having a discussion with C.B. Buck. Tell me why that was foul because... Now the ball, you know, hits the edge of the plate and goes fair territory. It's a fair ball. I don't even think it hit the edge of the plate. Well, Molina knew he had the out and didn't want to have Segura have one more crack at it. You got to like uh, Molina, though. He jumped right out there and made the throw to first. Has started every game but one this year. A lot of catchers will get one of those weekend days off, won't they? Not Molina. Well, you don't see too many catchers in this day and age catch as much as Yadi or Molina. And normally day game after a night game, you're going to switch out your backup catcher. Tony Cruz, the backup for the Cardinals, has started one game. Oh, that's who the backup catcher is. Right. Little known Tony Cruz. Yeah. Molina has made 30 of 31 starts behind home plate. That is amazing. Ryan Braun's season numbers very close to 300 again. Having a nice series, five hits already. 
Just and needs to produce some numbers. And using right field. That was a stretch where he was getting a little bit full conscious. Letting the ball get to him and driving the ball into right field. One has five hits in the series, but just one RBI has been able to be produced by the Brewer left fielder. Fouls another one back. Now the delivery for Jaime Garcia. A little bit of a short armor. He doesn't really follow through with that arm. Once he gets rid of the baseball, it kind of stops it right at the end, and that allows him to get some pretty good sink. You see, he doesn't really fully extend with his pitching arm. Braun holds up to even the count at two balls and two strikes. No score here in the Brewer half of the first two down. Garcia got two quick outs against Aoki and Segura. Take a look at our Wisconsin Lottery home run leaderboard. Ryan Braun and Uni Betancourt at the top with seven apiece and Carlos Gomez just behind with six. And Segura with some early season maybe surprising power. He's got four. Homer in yesterday's game. Would you have guessed that at this point in the season that uh, those three guys would be in there? No way. And Braun to right, right down the right field line. All the way to the corner. And an easy double for Ryan Braun. And the Brewers have a runner in scoring position here in the first inning. Now you mentioned that Ryan's batting average is starting to creep up. And we mentioned the way he's been using the opposite field. And nobody does that any better than Ryan Braun. Taking a pitch that's on the outside corner, cut fastball. Not even sure it was a strike. You can see the way Braun top down and able to get on top of it and rip it down that right field line. He hits the ball down the right field line like a left handed pull hitter would. And that's a very tough thing to do. Very smooth for Ryan Braun. That brings up Aramis Ramirez. Good to see Ramirez. Back of the lineup today. This is his second game since coming off the disabled list. He played on Friday. Rested up yesterday. Still not 100% and doesn't expect to be for some time as he's injured that same left knee really twice within a month, early in March and early in April. And he got taken out of uh, Friday's game a little bit early. It was about the seventh inning. And just don't want to, you know, eat your risk of re injury. Is greater once you get a little bit tired. He was running the bases a couple of times and just want to play it safe. Last thing you want to do is have him miss a month and then have to go back on the DL. And he was able to collect a couple of hits on Friday, did not go to a minor league rehab assignment, so he's trying to get back here on the major league level. That's why I took yesterday off. A little chopper right back to Garcia. And the Brewers are done here in the first. No score. The Cardinals and the Brewers.
Marco De Mayo. As we head to the second inning, come out to the ballpark as the Brewers host the first place Texas Rangers this Tuesday and Wednesday. For tickets, call 414 902 4000 or visit Brewers.com. That's a good ball club. Texas Rangers. You think about the uh, Brewers' opponents as Marco Estrada goes to work against David Fries here to open up the second inning. This nice long nine game homestand, all three opponents uh, will begin. The series in first place. The Pirates were in first place last Monday. Then St. Louis comes in. They're in first place in Texas in the AL uh, West in yeah. first place. And Texas coming into play today, 19 and 11. Once the Red Sox are off to a good start, they've got 20 wins. Best record in baseball right now for the Boston Red Sox, 20 and 10, and the Cardinals right behind it, 19 and 11. There's the rock climbing wall out there in the do deck here at Miller Park. Is that like the do deck cam? The do cam, the deck cam. How does I know that's a ways up there. Once you get up to the top of that uh, that soda can, it looks even bigger with that camera. Got the low angle brew in there. There's freeze down a ball and two strikes. And he strikes out, so Estrada has struck out his last three batters. Well, three strikeouts, one with a changeup, and two with fastball. See the grip, the four seam fastball, and throws it right by David Freeze on the inner half of the plate. Freeze has been a hot hitter in this series. He is six for 12 in this series, Rocky. Come into the series 0 for his last 16. Right. Here's Daniel Descalso. He also hit his first home run of the season yesterday. One and one now to the second baseman of the St. Louis Cardinals. Marco Estrada needed 27 pitches to make it a scoreless first inning against St. Louis. And another swing and a miss to even the count two balls and two strikes. Now these St. Louis hitters obviously going up there looking off speed, maybe curveball, maybe change up, but it's amazing how Marco can get that fastball by these guys. High fly ball right field, this one hooking foul. Sky high here at Miller Park. Marco Estrada, who has struck out the last three batters, delivers the 2 2 and just misses outside. And he walks Descalso, second walk given up by Estrada here early. Big personalities, big chip stacks, and big time poker plays are the big story in this week's action at the WPT Borgata Poker Open. Tune in tonight at the World Poker Tour presented by ClubWPT.com to watch the chips fly as the remaining players battle for the title on more than $800,000 in first place prize money. So a runner at first here with one down in the Cardinal half of the second inning. Pete Cosma. Now steps in the Cardinal shortstop. Cosma using his glove early in yesterday's game to rob the Brewers of a couple of potential runs. And defense for the Cardinals has been very good to start the season. And currently 13 errors as tied for second in the National League. Can you believe the Diamondbacks? They've committed just six errors this year. Six. The Diamondbacks. That's, That's unbelievable. That is incredible. 
Played very well here when they swept the Brewers in the opening week. Ironically, Rock, out of those 13 errors the Cardinals have committed this season, Descalso has five of them as he loops a single into center field. So two aboard here after the first batter retired here in the second inning. Both base hits just softly served over the infield. And we've seen a lot of that in this series. Not to say that they haven't hit some balls hard, which they obviously have, but the fact that they make such good contact on a consistent basis as a team. The third fewest strikeouts in the National League for the Cardinals, so they put the ball in play. Here's Garcia, who does not have a hit yet this season. We're infield at the corners playing in. See if Garcia tries to move his runners over. And this time swinging away, missing it off speed. Our charter high speed pit so far today for Garcia and Estrada. 91 miles an hour for each. They've been effective with their velocity so far. Cardinals threatening here in the second inning. And again, Garcia swinging away. Well, surprising that they're uh, not dropping down bunts to get a couple of men in scoring position for John Jay, but Mike Matheny allowing Garcia to swing away. There's Mike Matheny, the former Brewer catcher, second year manager for the Cardinals. Garcia waits. Here's the 0-2, and it's fouled straight back. Hey, look at the statistics, and Jaime Garcia has not dropped down a successful sacrifice bunt, which is probably why he's not bunting. There you go. And now he checks with Jose Okendo, the third base coach. Last sacrifice bunt for Garcia last September. It's one of the main offensive jobs the pitchers are asked to do, but uh, obviously Garcia has struggled with it this year. And now he's showing bunt. And Estrada steps off the mound, wants to make sure his defense is set. Some strategy coming into play with the two strike pitch. Pops this one up foul and he strikes out. And they know why he was swinging away, right? Still has not dropped down a sacrifice bunt. Change of plans though on the 0-2 pitch. Kind of interesting. Either that or he didn't get the sign the first few times. <laughs> hey Jaime, bunt! <laughs> it's kind of obvious in, in those situations. Set, uh, first and second, one out. Most of the time in the National League, you're going to have your pitcher bunting. The last four outs recorded by Estrada, technically all strikeouts. So two down, here's John Jay batting for the second time. And again, Estrada steps off the rubber. And Jay with a base hit in the first inning on a changeup. Let's see how they attack him this time. Gets the inside corner. Strike one. John Jay with the home run yesterday and the game winning hit as well in the ninth inning. Big day for him. Career high four RBIs. Strada just misses inside this time. Here's the 1 1. And fouled right down the third baseline. Ball and two strikes now with two down to the leadoff hitter, John Jay. The 
The Cardinals have never swept the Brewers in a four game series. That's what they're trying to do today. And of course the Brewers trying to prevent that. Get back on the winning track. And this one hits Jay. A one two count. And now the bases are loaded. And Jay just kind of stuck his knee right out there and uh, watch Jay's knee. I mean he really doesn't make much of an effort to get out of the way actually put that knee right on that baseball. Watch, watch the knee it's actually going to go toward the baseball not go away from it. Of course uh, a call like that is very rarely if ever called remember that was called against Niger Morgan. A couple of times. In terms of Shane Robinson, yeah, Morgan often would turn his upper body right. to avoid getting hit, not move out, but right. turn it. And you're right, he has been called for that. Robinson now with the bases loaded. Cardinals threatening in the first two innings here against Marco Estrada. He has used 50 pitches already in this game. Ball and a strike on the way to Robinson. A little different uh, complexion to the inning when you have Shane Robinson at the plate. You know, most of the time you're going to have Carlos Beltran up in these situations. He's a number two hitter. He's getting today off. So Marco is getting an opportunity to get out of this mess. Having a tough time commanding the strike zone. 22 balls, 29 strikes. He's often been behind in the count. As he is here now, two balls in a strike to Robinson. He's not recorded an RBI yet this season. And outside again, three and one. A lot of early visits to the mound as well, and communication between Luke Roy and Estrada in this game. Yeah, just a little bit out of sync, as Marco, it seems like. And he walks in the game's first run. And Estrada kind of throwing his arms up and, and well, you know, you got a guy up there hitting under 200 and you have three and one, you throw a curveball. It's kind of a surprising call on a pitch like that. You need to throw a strike. You've got a guy that doesn't get many starts. He struggled offensively. Taking the blame there, but it still leads to a run, and he's got to get it straightened out in a hurry here because it only gets tougher with Matt Holiday at the plate and the bases loaded. Three walks already in this game for Estrada. It's been a strong suit for him all season. He came in with only seven walks in his first six starts. So just a little bit uh, out of rhythm here early on. And he's already behind the holiday. 2 0. Well, Strada just can't find that strike zone right now. Man, these hitters know it. I mean, when he's not throwing off speed over for a strike, Marco not willing to give in and throw him a fastball. That's when the fastball becomes very hittable when these hitters are looking for it. Wow. Missing high and away, 3 0. Well, Estrada's going to have to dig deep and find it right here. Question is do you give Holiday the green light? Cardinals' run has been walked in. There's a strike in the outside corner. Well, they won't be taking now in a 3 1 pitch. See the shadows just across home plate right now. Pitcher in the sun. And he walks in another run. 
Well, a tough go of it here in the second inning, to say the least. This just does not look like Marco Estrada at all. Boy, one uh, pitch uh, away from getting out of the inning when he hit John Jay in the knee, and then he's not been able to throw a strike since. Been a uh, tough inning, a tough start to this game for Marco. I haven't seen uh, control problems from Marco yet. His first. Here's Alan Craig. First pitch a strike for Estrada. Good start to Craig at the plate. We saw no activity out there in that Brewer bullpen as of yet. Three walks and a hit batter in this inning. He's only allowed one hit, but two runs are already home, and the base is still loaded. And this one lined fair down the left field line. Two runs are in. A third is being waved around. And here comes the relay throw. It's going to be off target. And a three-run double for Alan Craig to bust things open here in the second inning. It is five to nothing St. Louis. That was a change up up in the strike zone. You can see the difference down in the strike zone. He was able to strike Craig out his first time up. This one upstairs and although he's out in front of it able to keep it fair and clears the bases. Matt Holiday chugging around all the way around from first base able to score run number five. And once again all with two outs. All this damage with two outs for the Cardinals that seems to be a, a theme in this first part of the season. Here comes Molina the catcher the ninth batter here in the second inning. This one foul. And there now is activity out there. Alfredo Figaro now warming up for Milwaukee. Well, a day off to tomorrow for Milwaukee, another day off on Thursday, and that would surely help the bullpen in the event of a very short start here today. This is the 63rd pitch coming up right here by Estrada in this game, and it's lined into center field, the base hit. A wave the runner, Alan Craig home, and it is now six to nothing. St. Louis, a six run second inning, and they have battered around. Run all with two outs. Fastball out over the plate. Molina taking it back through the middle, and Craig able to score easily. Five consecutive base runners for the Cardinals. Two hits, two walks, and a hit batter. There's David Freeze, who began this inning by striking out. It was a good start to the inning, and it quickly fell apart from there. This one lined to left. Ryan Braun a few steps back. And finally, it ends. Heavy damage by the Cardinals. Six to nothing.
Bottom of the second, Jaime Garcia has a loaded offense here. Some poor pitching by Estrada in that inning. Our Feldco All-Star voting update for you. Take a look at everyone on the ballot. Punch those ballots and go online and vote as well. A lot of good stars, of course. Ryan Braun out in left field. Gomez having a fantastic year, and so is Gene Segura. So the Brewers come to bat here in the bottom of the second inning. It's the second time in this series that the Cardinals have batted around for six runs in a single inning. They did it on Thursday against Milwaukee back in the third inning as well. And this starting pitching is too good to be staked to a 6 nothing lead. That's for sure. They have been the best in baseball, the starting pitchers for the Cardinals. As good as the starters have been, the bullpen for the Cardinals has been roughed up in the early going. And the Cardinals get out and jump early, and they have in this series. Check it out. St. Louis with 17 runs, outscoring Milwaukee 17 to 2 in the first three innings. And 12 of those runs for the Cardinals have, uh, have come in two innings. A couple, as you mentioned, a couple of six run innings for St. Louis in this series. Thursday and Sunday. Weeks ground ball to short for the first out here in the second inning. Now for our Ho Chunk text the broadcast question. John from Plover wants to know do you think Milwaukee will host another All Star game? It's going to be a while, though. I mean, it's kind of a rotation. This year the game is at City Field in New York, hosted by the Mets. Next year, about a five hour drive to the northwest. It's uh, Target Field is going to host the All Star game. Minnesota Twins. So Milwaukee, yes, indeed, will, but it will be a while. Here's Jonathan Lucroy with one down, batting for the first time today. I think it's going to be snowing at Target Field for the All Star game next year. The way things are going, you never know. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Tell you what, if it is, they can move it down here, right? Right, absolutely. That would get you a, a quick vote for the All Star. Brewers will be glad to uh, host the game if they can't. Every year there's talk, you know, about the snow, whether it be in Chicago, Detroit, Minneapolis, Col Colorado. 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 Why don't they just move the series to Milwaukee? Right. They've done it before. Brewers hosted back in 0-2. That was a very, very fun event, that All-Star game back in 0-2. Luke Curry, line of the left, and right at Holiday for the second out. Well, the Brewers are going to have to come from behind and piece some things together. Can't get it all in one swing of the bat, that's for sure. Well, you got to, you know, just peck away, and you hope that Marco's going to be able to settle down and give Ron Redicky some more innings. It's kind of what happened on Thursday. Six run inning and then the Brewers pitching was able to settle things down. The Brewers almost came back and won. Carlos Gomez pops one into shallow left. Holiday comes in and calls off his shortstop. We're going to take you back 100 years to Milwaukee Brewers baseball when we come back to Miller Park.
going all the way back into the vault wearing the 1913 commemorative championship jerseys. I'm joined now by two baseball historians, Chance Michaels, Paul Tempenny of BorchardField.com. And Chance, what is the significance of honoring this team in this era? But 1913 was the American Association Milwaukee Brewers' first pennant. And the Brewers thought it would be a great idea to honor the team on the, uh, the 100th anniversary of taking that flag. Two baseball historians wearing pieces of history. Tell us about what you're wearing, Chance. Uh, this is an authentic 1913 jersey. Um, we provided it to the Brewers so they could use it as reference material for the uniforms that they're wearing today. And Paul, my... This is a 1943 uniform, uh, 70 years old, worn during the war years when Bill Veck was in charge of and owned the Brewers. Very cool, very authentic pieces of history right here. And guys, where can people learn more about this era and, and previous eras? Well, we run an online museum at borchardfield.com. That's B-O-R-C-H-E-R-T field.com. Great stuff. So, Craig and Rock, we can go online and read more about this very old Brewers team and get some more great stuff from these guys in their online museum. Thanks very much, uh, Sophia. And uh, nothing like going back in baseball history and it's uh, been fun to do here and looking at the it's always fun to see what kind of uniforms they wore when the teams like the Brewers were the replicas you see the big block M on the jersey and their hats here but uh, 50 years of Brewers baseball back in the American Association a little Borchard Field and yeah. for those who uh, grew up here um, it, it's great to look back and have that in the memory banks it, Bruce Fremming was just here yeah. in the booth a couple of innings ago, former Major League umpire and spent a lot of time down there growing up. Yep, you played at uh, Borchard yep. Field that opened in 1888. It was uh, closed uh, in 1952. It was uh, built on a rectangular block mounted by North 7th and 8th Streets and Chambers in Burleigh. And right now, I-43 runs right through it. To look at some information dating back to that 1913 team played there for 50 years and another walk issued by Marco Estrada not the manager Pep Clark yeah you know the dimensions of Borchard Field down the left field line and down the right field line amazingly I think it was uh, 265 feet 267 feet but in the gaps 435. So if you pull the baseball, you're in pretty good shape at Borchard Field. You hit it into center field, good luck to you. A lot of old ballparks were had that type of similar shape, though. Yeah. In the major leagues, multi use stadiums, Borchard Field was as well. You know, the Packers uh, played their first game ever in Milwaukee at Borchard Field. They, they lost 10 to 7 to the New York Giants. That was back in 1933. Little ground ball, Ricky Weeks has to take the batter out. Runner moves ahead to second base. So Cosma retired. Look at a ticket back in 1943 for 99 cents. How about that? Yeah. Got the old Barrel Man logo on there. Good stuff. Good old Borchard Field. Yep. Through 1952, and of course, then they constructed County Stadium, hoping to attract a major league club, and got the Boston Braves to move here. Here's the pitcher Jaime Garcia. So the ticket cost 99 cents in the uh, the program, the official scorecard, just a dime. <laughs> yeah. Where are those days? Yeah. Oh, back in 19 or 1891. The Milwaukee Brewers of the American Association replaced a disbanded team called the Cincinnati Kelly's Killers. Wow. How about that? I'm reading this online, this so I'm is just not coming up with, you know, <laughs> this is not my own brain. I, I feel as though you know, it would be a shame to forget about, you know, that era. You know, Borchard Field was a big part of the, the baseball history in Milwaukee. So kind of, you know, researching some of it. Love some of those names, though. Very interesting. Very interesting stuff. Some of those names you wouldn't use today, right? Right. You wouldn't put killers in names no, today. No, you couldn't do that's that. That's for sure. Nope. A lot of other great choices.
I like it though when a city like Milwaukee can embrace the fact that they had the Brewers in the American Association for that length of time and then when they finally got their second big league club to replace the Braves who left town of course to go to Atlanta right that they were able to take a name that meant something to the city. Packers is the same way up in Green Bay as Garcia strikes out. So two down here in the third inning. John Jay will bat for the third time already today. A rough second inning for Marco Estrada. Walked three batters, hit a batter, gave up six runs on only three hits. As the Cardinals batted around for the second time in an inning in this series. Brewers of course will be happy to see their division rival go away for a while but they want to send him out with a defeat and it becomes a little more difficult now that the Cardinals have been spotted six early runs Brewers have had a, a tough time here at Miller Park it's been hot or cold you know they began the season with the win lost their next five then went on that winning streak where they won eight straight at Miller Park and now on the verge of trying to avoid another five game losing streak here at home. Little chopper Betancourt's got it and no damage done here in the third inning but it's still six nothing St. Louis. Fans wearing their sombreros for Cinco de Mayo, Corey Hart's bobblehead, wearing 1913 uniforms. So all different kinds of looks here at Miller Park today. Tonight on our AT&T Twitter poll, we are asking Brewers fans to weigh in on which is your favorite Brewers jersey. Is it the 1913 look they're wearing today, the good old ball and glove look, the gold jerseys, which Willie Peralta has sort of adopted as his personal jersey, or the current traditional look? of the uh, navy and gold so I think we know what rock will answer with Craig but maybe you can weigh in on what you think they sit to uh, left field to open things up good question a tough one though I mean it's all about color and appeal sometimes isn't it the Brewers have the uh, the old look on right now and we can kind of go through the gamut there's uh, the 1913 throwback which is the first time we've seen those the the ball and glove right that, that's my favorite that's, that's got to be a favorite and then maybe a, a new alternative favorite of the gold jerseys that they're wearing this year and then the current uniform the nice white clean looking jersey top right there that yeah, ball and glove it was only on the hat you know back in the day when the Brewers wore those 
on a regular basis back in the 80s and earlier on than that that uh, they didn't have the ball and go logo on the sleeve. It's kind of been adjusted. Now. It's kind of been uh, added lately, but uh, the ball and glove was on the hat. It's kind of like in in football where you have the the, the shoulders used to have the uh, uh, numbers on the side were were originally put there for for TV purposes. Mm -hmm. So when the games were all on TV, then you could start now. Who's that? Oh, I see his number. I know who that is. It's all about TV. It's right? all about TV. It's all about the look. It's all about the look. The problem is I'd go hashtag all of the above. So you'd uh, play it right down the middle. Right down the sit middle. Right on that Jerry, picket fence. Jerry Augustine and I always sit right on the fence when it comes to can't make a decision. I've noticed. Uh, I haven't noticed that with Jerry. Oh, you haven't. <laughs> <laughs> Estrada gets the bunt down and the sacrifice complete. They come out to the ballpark for Brewers Spring Madness May 20th through the 22nd. Save 50% on select seats, hot dogs, and small sodas are just $1 each. For tickets, visit Brewers.com slash madness. Speaking of Jerry Augustine, I think that's right up Augie's alley. $1 hot dogs? Absolutely. See, now, if you offer Jerry a dollar hot dog or a dollar hamburger, he'd have a tough decision to make. Well, he didn't want to make either the hot dog or hamburger feel bad. <laughs> He's that nice a guy. It's a good guy. Nori Aoki do up and you can catch Jerry with uh, Mark and Cannon on Brewers Live post game coming up after the game. And of course Sophia Minnert will have a uh, final vote update for you as well. One down here in the Brewer third inning they trail by six runs runner in scoring position. These are the times you want to take advantage of obviously to get back in the game. If you give up a lot of runs in bunches I guess you want to do it early so you have that much more time to come back and the Brewers have, have been able to do that a couple of times in this series. Yeah, Well uh, Thursday I mean they were down six and nothing as you mentioned the third inning came back and had the go ahead run at home plate in the ninth inning. So yeah. I guess if you have to be behind by six you want it to be early. And it's certainly not the best uh, scenario given the way the Brewer or the Cardinals starting rotation has performed so far this year. Pretty amazing the Cardinal starters had recorded all 18 victories prior to yesterday. Yesterday was the first time a reliever got a victory for St. Louis. High chopper. Could be a tough play and a out is reported by Daniel Descalso. Aoki giving first base umpire Todd Tishner an extra look but very close play over there. Oh, this is a classic Aoki just putting the bat on the baseball and boy that's a bang bang play. And Awfully hard to argue either way. The call could have gone either way, and they could have been an out or safe. I mean, that's uh, about as close as it gets. They say tie goes to the runner, but there is very rarely a tie. Could have called him safe, didn't. There's Gene Segura with the runner at third base now. Betancourt moves up. Segura lined out to center his first time up. Had a home run in yesterday's game. And then Segura joined a list of one Brewer Hall of Famer and one potential Hall of Famer to be on a short list of rounding into a double play three times in one game. Robin Yount did it and Ryan Braun has done it. So that was only the third time that's ever happened. It's a rarity. Here's the 2 0. Popped up, foul territory, first base side. Descalso coming in and making a nice catch. Two good plays by the Cardinals' second baseman. Aoki thought maybe he should be standing over at first base. Didn't like that call.
brought to you by Pickley Whitley, the official supermarket of Fox Sports Wisconsin. By Ho-Chunk Gaming Wisconsin, your ticket to more. And by Marshfield Clinic, don't just live, shine. And we welcome you back to Miller Park here in Milwaukee. Cinco de Mayo Day today. The Cardinals leading the Brewers six to nothing in the fourth inning. Top of the fourth we go. And Marco Estrada back out on the hill for Milwaukee. 82 pitches so far in this game. That rough second inning where he gave up six runs. That's been the real key in this game where the Brewers don't want that number to be locked down. Nice stop in the hole. Segura, big throw. And it's going to be late. Good stop. And Shane Robinson with good speed down the line for the infield hit. Hey, today's tavern of the game when there's the top spot tavern and grill in Balsam Lake. If they call the Brewers in the next 24 hours. They get 40 Miller Lite beer pen tickets to a Brewers home game this year. This offer courtesy of the Tavern League of Wisconsin and Miller Lite. Matt Holiday with the runner at first. Nobody out here in the fourth. Takes a hack at that first pitch from Estrada. Brewers have a day off tomorrow and a day off on Thursday. A couple of uh, situations there. One is Aramis Ramirez, of course, as he slowly gets his way back on track for Milwaukee. The plan not quite to play him every single game. Played Friday. Had yesterday off playing today, so tomorrow's scheduled day off. Could play both games against the Rangers. Tuesday and Wednesday because of that scheduled day off Thursday and then right back at it on Friday so he could string together four consecutive games thanks to those days off and holiday with his second home run of the series a no doubter again a two run pop this time and that increases the Cardinals lead now to eight to nothing. Well, one of those days for Marco Estrada. First home run allowed, but the Cardinals laying one on him here today in eight run. Eight runs on the board in three plus innings. Three RBIs for Matt Holiday and Cardinals stretch their lead. That was a fastball that time. The 11th home run allowed by Estrada here this season. Alan Craig now bats. Bases are clear, but still nobody out here in the fourth. Alan Craig with that big hit back in the second inning with the bases loaded gets three RBIs on a double. Well, I'd like to say at this point, down eight to nothing, that you know, Ron Renicky leaves Marco out there just to eat up some innings, take the pressure off the bullpen. But this one hit well to right. Aoki on the warning track. Makes the catch for the first out. Those 11 home runs by Estrada, the uh, most in the National League. Yeah, the problem for Marco and Ron Renicky, and here comes Renicky. He's pushing 90 pitches as we get into the fourth inning here with one out, and that's going to do it. Well, the Brewers are going to the bullpen, and we will take a break. Eight to nothing, St. Louis.
Bucks. The Brewers trail eight to nothing to the Cardinals. From a dynamic backcourt that helped the Bucks to the playoffs to Larry Sanders' emergence as a premier post player, Fox Sports Wisconsin takes a look back at the Milwaukee Bucks season. It's Bucks season review Tuesday at 10:30, only on Fox Sports Wisconsin. Alfredo Figaro into the game now. And last pitched on Thursday against these Cardinals and uh, did a pretty good job. Two and two thirds scoreless. Hard throw, a good slider. Stranded three inherited base runners in the fifth inning on Thursday. And four times he's pitched more than one inning. Well, he's been uh, very valuable for Ron Rennick in situations like this. Look for Figaro to stay out there for a bit. And Figaro making a, an early appearance here in the fourth inning, just one down. Estrada, a forgettable day on the mound. Eight earned runs given up in just three and a third innings of work. And again, the walks five career high now for Estrada. Only had seven on the season coming in. He just really didn't feel it looked as though he had a good feel for off speed today. And you know, because of that, really wasn't willing to challenge these hitters with his fastball. And one of the rare occasions where Marco did not have a good changeup. Molina retired on the fly out to right two down now. Well, Marco will remain winless against the Cardinals. Came in 0 and 3 at 462 earned run average. And Cardinals have been rough on this Brewers team since about midway in 2011. Before that the Brewers had their way with St. Louis. For a while. The tide has turned. Yes, it has. And Brewers figure. made a big run on on the Cardinals when they first went to the playoffs back in 2008. He's got to figure out a way to you know, turn the tables. He's got to keep grinding it out against his club. Brewers are going to see the Cardinals on the next road trip. Go to Bush at the end of this 10-day road trip. David Freeze. Foul ball. David Freeze made two of the three outs back in that second inning. Take a look at the upcoming schedule. After the day off tomorrow, it's Texas for two. Interleague play here at Miller Park. Then there's that road trip. Cincinnati, Pittsburgh for four. And then finishing up in St. Louis again. So a lot of games in the first six, seven weeks of the season against the St. Louis Cardinals. The Brewers, though, if uh, things go the way this game has gone now, an eight-nothing deficit are in danger of falling five and a half games out of first place. And boy, you talk about flipping the switch within the span of less than a week. Again, early this week, they were only a half game out of first. I don't think anybody's too worried about you know the standings at this point. But what I think you're getting at is the fact that you don't want to get too far below 500. Now you want to stick around 500 you get Corey back you get Aramis Ramirez at full tilt playing every day but I think more importantly in the concern for Ron Renicki the pitching which carried this ball club in a nine game winning streak has struggled lately. And a strikeout of David Freeze for Figaro. Eight nothing St. Louis.
Community Foundation will again feature our 50-50 raffle. Sellers will be in the parking lots early in the ball game, and then $2 tickets on sale until the 4th. Check out the scoreboard before the famous racing sausages to take home 50% of the pop proceeds from the raffle support nonprofit organizations in the areas of health, education, recreation, and basic needs. Get your tickets today. A lot of people participate in that on a daily basis here at Miller Park. Good to produce a lot of winners. Ryan Braun leads off the bottom of the fourth for Milwaukee. Jaime Garcia, a very efficient game so far. His pitch count under 40 pitches. Ryan Braun, a base hit earlier in the game. A double down the right field line. Blues have had uh, opportunities with runners in scoring position, have not been able to cash in. It's been really the difference in the series. The effectiveness of the Cardinals with runners in scoring position. And the Brewers have had a tough time. Cardinals the best in baseball with runners in scoring position especially with two out and they've displayed that almost on a game by game basis here in this series alone and uh, the Brewers have had to work much harder in a lot of categories. I think that's the the one thing that Ron Renneke was saying before the game it's not that he has not seen the effort by his team is he thinks his club is still playing well it's just St. Louis right now is doing positively nothing wrong during this winning streak that they're on right now. Right. And their Achilles heel right now is their bullpen, but what the opposition, whether it's the Brewers or anybody else, they can't get the starters out of the game really enough to really have any effectiveness because their bullpen is giving up some runs. Garcia with a fastball by Brawny. And Ryan Braun on for the second time today. He'll take the walk to lead off the fourth inning. Take a look at our Marshfield Clinic shining stars of the future. And we go to Triple A Nashville where Hunter Morris his game yesterday a round rock two for three a walk in an RBI. This season four home runs in 12 RBIs. Nashville did not win that game but it's good to see those kinds of numbers being put up by Hunter Morris who we expect to see one day very soon here is the Brewer first baseman. Yeah, we saw him in spring training. I think uh, struggled a bit. I think a bit overwhelmed, if you will. But I think he's got a bright future ahead of him. I would imagine next spring, going into spring training, you're going to see a different Hunter Morris. Guy can hit. Here's a Ramos Ramirez. 0 for 1. You have to imagine all the scenarios that have gone through first base. From before spring training on, when Corey Hart underwent his surgery, then Matt Gamble, first time back out on the field, just during some routine infield work, injures his knee again and is out for the season. To putting Alex Gonzalez over there at first base, a number of people, and all of a sudden now, Uni Betancourt is is the guy over there waiting for Corey Hart to get back and healthy and that'll still be uh, about a month from now but five different players have gone through that scenario four actually and Blake Lally's made starts Gonzalez Betancourt Maldonado's been over there Maldonado has uh, played well over there and it takes a uh, village to replace Corey Hart apparently right <laughs> Ramirez and this one may get to the gap long run and it's caught out there nice running catch by John Jay Ramirez hit it well Cardinal outfield has played very deep in this series taking away the extra base hits you can see Jay way out there in center field all he has to do is go across and make the catch made it look easy the deeper you play the more you cut off those gaps Mike Matheny and the Cardinals coaching staff saying we're going to make the Brewers hit three singles to get a run as opposed to the extra base hits and so far it's worked in this series. Here's Ricky Weeks. We go back to uh, the Hunter Morris conversation we had over at first base and you got to give the Brewers you know credit for not saying you know what maybe we're in a pinch let's let's bring him up and give him a try see how he does at this level but you don't want to 
impede his progress either. He's never played at AAA, and he seems to be the type of player who, who makes the natural transitions from uh, affiliate to affiliate. He has uh, obviously been a rising star, to say the least. You know, and that might have been different had he had a good spring training. I mean, not to say that he would have broken with the team in spring training, but all that's going on, you know, with the injuries and had he shown well in spring training, they might have brought him up. But the fact that he did not, they didn't want to really ruin his confidence and bringing him up and struggle. That's the last thing you want to do to a young player. So, you know, Brewers believe in keeping their guys down as long as they can, and uh, I think it's worked out well. There are exceptions to the rule, and they are apparent in Gene Segura. Gene Segura, the guy at the plate, came up very early on. Ricky Weeks back in uh, back a while ago, and took him a while to get things going. That's an organizational philosophy for Milwaukee, and you make sure your guys are ready before you throw them into the fire in the big leagues. It's a different animal in the big leagues. Ricky Weeks strikeouts. Jonathan Lucroy coming up and Sophia Minner has more on the Brewer catcher. Well Ron Ronicky sensing some frustration from Lucroy after Friday's game struggling at the plate and also an uncharacteristic pass ball and Ronicky said he's just one of those players who feels a lot of responsibility on the team feels responsible for every pitcher and as a catcher calling the game making sure he puts the team in the best position to win. So he said that yesterday's getting the day off and getting that pinch hit two runs hit yesterday it really helps Lucroy he thought it might help break him out of this slump at the plate saying that Lucroy is one of those guys who more than any of the others is really just a team guy and wants to do whatever he can to help the team contribute whether he's succeeding personally. Well and again I think a lot of catchers are like that I mean you really take it upon yourself and you feel guilty when your pitching staff is not throwing well and you know, Maldonado you can lump into that category as well. Lucroy high fly ball right field hit it well. But again, Shane Robinson, good position. And the Brewers are done here in the fourth. Takes us back to the second inning. A tough one for Marco Estrada. Walks three batters, hits a batter, gives up three hits, and suddenly everything going the Cardinals' way, and they score six runs and bat around against the Brewers' starting pitcher today and knock him out of the game, not even through the fourth inning. And the Cardinals have added a couple of more since, but now on a Eight to nothing lead over Milwaukee as we head to the fifth inning. Figaro back out on the hill for the Brewers, holding the duty out of the bullpen early in this game. Descalso leads off the fifth inning for St. Louis. He's been on base twice via the walk. 
St. Louis putting themselves in tremendous position to pick up their first ever four game sweep against the Brewers. You don't get many four game series during the season against your division rivals. There hasn't been a lot of opportunities, but the Cardinals in great shape right now, unless the Brewers can mount a tremendous comeback. Uh, that's all going to start if that's going to happen with the pitching. Have to keep the Cardinals off the board and and hope the bats get going. Jaime Garcia is looking pretty good today. He's only allowed two hits in the game and three total base runners. He's been very efficient with his pitchers. The Brewers have not been able to put much together at all so far in this game against him. The one two to Descalso misses outside. With those two days coming off this week, we talked about the uh, Brewers also putting themselves in position to skip Burgos's next start. But he'll be available out of the bullpen on Tuesday and Wednesday. He's been pitching well since he made his major league debut. And check over at the third base umpire, Bill Miller. And Descalso can't check his swing, so a strikeout for Figaro. And C.B. Buckner checking with Bill Miller down at third base. I'm not sure where the pitch missed. First of all, it looked like a strike. Pitch was over the plate. Descalso swings, so that's a strike on a couple of accounts. And Bill Miller rings him up. You think Bill Miller would have said to C.B. Buckner, "Let's check back with you." <laughs> like a strike from here. <laughs> Uh, one of those days. Here's Pete Cosma, the Cardinal shortstop. Cosma with a hit, scored a run back in that second inning. That's six runs second. Another one foul. Pete Cosman, a very tough spot in the batting order, number eight for a young hitter, and been struggling somewhat. At 265, he's been able to raise his average a bit. But he's a, a very good defender at shortstop. About as automatic as it gets. There's another base hit. He's taken the spot of Raphael for call who is lost before the season began for the year. So he's been on twice now a couple of base hits for Cosma that brings up Garcia the pitcher. See that strong line of shadows going across the playing surface here at Miller Park. It's about the time where it gets a little bit dicey for the hitter. Catchers have a tough time when you have your background, your batter's eye, looking behind the pitcher in the bright sunshine and everything else in the shade. It's tough on the eyes. Garcia, a big swing and a miss. The St. Louis Cardinals starting pitcher. That's just good to have the roof open here and signs of summer on the way here, hopefully, in this area. It's supposed to be a nice week yeah, in the 70s. Is. Maybe get things to dry out a little bit. That would be good for a lot of people. Get some yard work done. Have a mowed the lawn yet, have you? It's been mowed. <laughs> I can't so <laughs> in good conscience say I've mowed it. So let me go back and re-ask that question. I'll just phrase it differently. When's yeah. the last time you mowed your lawn? It's been a while. <laughs> what year? I'd rather not say. Okay. I thought maybe the Schroeder Estates would acquire a 
a big John Deere riding lawnmower this year. Yeah. Chance for two for Milwaukee. A relay in time. 4 6 3 double play. And the Brewers and Figaro get out of the fifth inning. Now they got to get their bats going. Somehow against Tommy Garcia, they trail eight to nothing. Here's our carsuit.com email the booth question. It comes from Howard from Middleton. What happens to the special uniforms that the Brewers are wearing today? These are the throwbacks, of course, to 1913. The caps are for sale in the team store. The jerseys can be pre ordered at the kiosk here at Miller Park at section 111, or you can email game used at brewers.com. And of course, when they Put these special uniforms together. Of course, the resale uh, all goes back to the charities that the Brewers Foundation support. So it's all for a good cause. Good question, and uh, a lot of a uh, lot of throwback types as well. Right. So yeah. it's kind of fun to have this and, and have everyone be part of it. Yeah, good stuff. You know, the uh, Negro Leagues tribute the Milwaukee Bears that do the same thing, and uh, good way to show off some of the uh, the past uniforms that were worn by teams in Milwaukee. A good look at the team store. One of the team stores. One of several here. Beautiful, at Miller beautiful Park. place. I mean, just go in there. A lot of stuff with the ladies in there. And Carlos Gomez down the left field line, and just foul. A lot of room there for a foul ball on the playing surface. That's a little bit out in front. Ball hooking fouls have got out there and. Gomez missing an extra base hit by about three feet. How about Carlos Gomez on an 11 game hitting streak entering today's game. Four home runs in 11 of those games. Need a little bit more on that previous swing down there in that corner to get number five. Yeah, just got off to a slow start his first. 10 or so games maybe nine games and. Ron Renicki sat him down in St. Louis on a Saturday and he has been on a tear since. Sometimes manager has to know when to sit somebody let them clear their head and Ron Renicki did that and. Right now Gomez one of the hottest hitters in all of baseball. Right down the line fair ball for Gomez and he'll start running. And he'll stop at second base as Holiday gets to the ball quickly so a leadoff double for the Brewers here in the fifth inning. Let's see if that starts something. And Gomez is doing something very well that we really haven't seen him do in his career. He used, used the whole field down the right field line all the way around to the left field line. And that cut fastball from Jaime Garcia left it out over the plate. And Gomez is able to tuck this one inside the third baseline. Just missed extra bases a couple of pitches ago. Got to be tough to see that baseball off the bat with those shadows the way they are. 
And at 375, his batting average on the season leads the National League. Another double added to the books for Gomez, and he's in scoring position for Uni Betancourt. Betancourt with a single back in the third. He was stranded at third base. Picked up hit number 1,000 of his career in Saturday's game. Fly ball down the right field line. And it is caught on the warning track. Gomez will tag and go to third. And makes it in there safely. So runner at third, one down for the Brewers. And the pitcher, Figaro, will come and bat for himself. And they need to eat up some more innings out of that bullpen. He came in with one down in the fourth inning. They get Figaro to eat up a couple or three innings, and then you have Kinsler to come in and and maybe Axford, maybe you know, give him a couple of innings, maybe iron out some of the issues he's been having. Got to figure out a way to you know, make a bright spot out of a tough day at the ballpark. You know, get some guys some work that have not. You might be able to you know pull Braun out of the ball game in a few innings. Give him some extra rest. Figaro, a little chopper, and only his third career at bat, and he points a run on the infield base hit. How about that? Boy, you never know. A pitcher can start out a lot of rallies, and that could be one there. First career hit, first career RBI. Well, you get the skunk out of the box for the Brewers. They're on the board. First major league hit and RBI and Garcia falling off toward the third baseline just could not get there and once it got by him it's going to be a tough play for Descalso. Alfredo Figaro he's running for his life sniffing a base hit and a very tough play by Descalso and Brewers on the board. There you go an easy call for Todd Tishner at first base. There's Aoki into right on the warning track. Well hit again for the out. And the guys in the dugout love it when they see the pitcher getting an infield hit for an RBI. And they know that's his first hit. That's what you like to see right there. Pitchers for the Brewers have uh, been swinging the bats pretty yes, well. They have. I mean, Yo's got a couple of home runs, and Peralta can swing the bat. Now one of the relievers on the board in the hit column. How about that? Brewers will take it. Well, they still have a long ways to go, but you got to inch a little closer. Still only halfway through this ball game. That's now 12 hits for the Brewer pitching staff. It's a lot of hits first month plus. So a big smile from Willie Peralta over there. He's been responsible for some of those. Gene Segura now. 0 for 2 so far in this game. Hey, Ivani Gallardo leads the Brewers pitchers in base hits. He's got four of them. Two of them home runs. Two no doubters for for Yo here at Miller Park. Right. Little chopper off Garcia's glove. Segura is safe. So two outs. The Brewers trying to put something together first and second now. Yeah, it could have been a base hit it had that ball not been knocked down and redirected by Garcia. Segura just runs too fast. So two more infield hits from Milwaukee. They continue to lead the league. He knows enough does Figaro to not. Get hit with that baseball. Look at this athleticism. A high hurdler. Well done. And the inning stays alive. He'll tell you he's done that a hundred times. Here's Ryan Braun. It's just this is the guy you want to see at the plate in this situation. Follows off the first pitch. Big chance for Ryan Braun to deliver a run here. 
doubled in his first at bat and also reached on a walk. So his season average back over 300. I'd like to know the last time Alfredo Figueroa was running the bases. I think when he showed up at the ballpark today, he was thinking, I'm going to be on second base with Ryan Braun at the plate. <laughs> After I drive in my first big league run. <laughs> hey, you just never know what you're going to see when you show up at this ballpark. It's the beauty of the game, isn't it? Yeah. Never the same game two days in a row. Nope. He's got the, uh, the traditional. I should say this season's logo on his helmet there. He's using Willie Peralta's helmet to bat with. You see Ryan Braun, there's no logo on his helmet as we throw back to 1913. So they didn't account for all the pitchers on the staff to be a hitter today. <laughs> Ryan Braun on this homestand so far, batting over 400. No home runs, two RBIs. Let's see if he can boost those power numbers right here. Stays alive, a ball and two strikes. Two out here in the Brewer half of the fifth inning. They finally got in the scoring column against Garcia. Doing it with some infield base hit. Here's the one two. Ron reaches out and it's over the pitcher's mound again, and there will be no play. Three infield hits, and the bases are loaded. Now the Brewers were due a couple of these. The Cardinals had their fair share of hits like that in this series. And maybe the fortunes are turning around a bit. And you got a Ramos Ramirez coming up with the bases loaded. Just putting the ball in play, making sure you make contact. And Jaime Garcia has been very close to getting out of this inning on a number of occasions. But has not been able to make the play on those ground balls. There's the Brewers leading the league in infield hits. They've got three more in this inning alone. Here's Ramirez who has 10 career grand slams batting with the bases loaded right now here in the fifth inning. Little chopper and this one's foul. Ramirez will be glad to go back and get another chance. Figueroa the pitcher over at third. Segura at second. And Ryan Braun over at first base. Base is loaded two down. Ramirez down two strikes to Jaime Garcia. And just to stay alive to live for another pitch. The Brewers' biggest threat so far in the game right here. They still have seven runs to go to catch the Cardinals, so you got to cash in if you're going to be able to do that right now, right here. And again, Ramirez hanging tough. And Garcia going to cut fastball on a couple of occasions, and Ramirez able to hang tough. You're right. Yeah, do what you can to get that pitch count up for Garcia and get into that bullpen. You never know. A 
again the 0 2 pitch. And Ramirez holds up. One and two now to the Brewer starting third baseman. Ramirez is third at bat in this game. Ramirez is only playing in his sixth game of the season. He has hit safely in his previous five. And this time he strikes out, so the Brewer threat comes to an end. Garcia poised on the mound for St. Louis. in the bottom of the inning and don't forget elect your favorite Brewers to the 2013 All-Star game vote early vote often and vote Brewers now through July 4th at Brewers.com Jeff Bianchi takes over third base for Milwaukee just like on Friday Ramos Ramirez three at bats and out of the game about two thirds of the way through he's up still Making sure that uh, knee holds up for him and he could be productive in the Brewers lineup. So, Alamos Ramirez now sits in the dugout for the rest of the game and day off tomorrow. Scheduled day off, no game. So, he'll get a chance to uh, rest up and be right back in there on Tuesday. John Jay leads off the sixth inning for the Cardinals. Brewers uh, playing some small ball with a lot of infield hits in that last inning. Three in a row, but uh, couldn't cash those infield hits into runs. They did get one. Gomez had that double to extend his hitting streak to 12 games. But they leave the bases loaded against Garcia. John Jay officially one for two in this game. He has a base hit. He was hit by a pitch back in that forgettable second inning and scored a run then. Brewers battled yesterday on Saturday. They were ahead, then they were behind, then they went back ahead, and it was tied. And the Cardinals won it in the ninth inning. And Ron Renicky said that was a, that was a tough one to absorb as a loss when they had a lot of opportunities to win against Adam Wainwright. He knows a win would have uh, helped push this team forward and 
Giving them a little bit of steam here to try to close out the series at least with a split but. Now they uh, are seriously on the verge of getting swept in a four game series. Weeks on the pickup nice play. Figaro may have gotten a glove on that one to slow it up. They couldn't hesitate at all. Nice play by Ricky. Yeah, scooping it up and making an off balance throw with something on it to get John Jay at first base. Good range up the middle, good balance, and a good throw to first. Here's Shane Robinson now with one down. Hits it hard to center field. Gomez drifts over and makes the catch two down quickly for Figaro. I was thinking about you know the 1913 St. Louis Cardinals, obviously in the National League, right? big leagues, but no, they didn't start wearing numbers in St. Louis on their uniforms. You know, and looking this stuff up until 1923. So numbers that you know they wore them in the minor leagues, you know, randomly. You know, certain teams around 1907. So the Milwaukee team in 1913 probably had numbers on their uniforms, but they were on the sleeves. On the sleeves. On the sleeves, yeah. But in 1913, the St. Louis Cardinals did not have numbers on their uniforms. Here's Matt Holiday who has his number on the back of his uniform. If that's of any interest to anybody but me. <laughs> <laughs> well. People have to understand that in this day and age when you go. Throwback it's. The yeah. Throwbacks the base right. but you could do some things along the way. Well, I'm not saying they, they should not have numbers under you. I'm just curious. I was just curious when it all started by the mid 30s 1930s. Just about every team had numbers on their. On their uniforms. And it was 1937. The Philadelphia Athletics were the last team to wear numbers on their jerseys. All this stuff you can look up online when you're when you've got an eight to one game. You can do that. And I find it interesting. I think it is interesting. It's the history of the game. And holiday singles into center field. It's the evolution of the uniform. Right. A lot of games weren't on TV back uh, back in that era. Right. In fact, none of them were. And the first major league team to wear numbers on their uniform, 1916. The Cleveland Indians trotted out numbers on their home jerseys, but they only, it only lasted for a couple of weeks. Now you see some of these uh, throwback shots of the early days of baseball when they played it for fun, basically. Most stadiums didn't even have fences back then. Back in the early days. Ball just kept rolling. Just kept rolling. You got to go get it. Well I get a kick out of looking in the uh, St. Louis media guide under their retired numbers and of course Rogers Hornsby played back in that era you're talking about. Right. And uh, did not have a number. So he's got a, an empty spot on the page where it says retired numbers. Right. But that's still an honor for him, obviously. Right. And, and when they started putting numbers on jerseys, they put numbers on the jersey that corresponded to where they hit in the batting order. So that's why Babe Ruth wore three, Lou Gehrig wore four. four. The backup catcher would be number nine in a lot of cases. And pitchers were 10 through 14. That's when they had only uh, you know, a handful of pitchers. Now they'd have to go a lot deeper than that. They'd have 12, uh, 12 numbers. Uh, just a little history on uh, you know numbers on uniforms. I remember the eras of probably the days you and I growing up if we saw. Anybody in uniform number 50 or, or maybe for sure 60 or above you're like where's that guy coming mm -hmm. from he must be a he must be a minor league or called up no number available for him. But now it's becoming more and more you have more retired numbers less less are your common numbers available right. Brewers here at Miller Park have numbers retired high above the stadium. Raleigh Fingers 34, Hank Aaron's 44, Paul Molitor's number four, Robin Yount's number 19. 
They've honored Uke a few years back for his 50th year in baseball. Go to Cincinnati and St. Louis, and they're prominently displayed. So Alan Craig, 2 2 count with two down. No, and you have to wear a number on your uniform. I mean, the Yankees and Red Sox played a game last year in April. They went to a throwback 1912 style uniform, and they were allowed not to have numbers on their on their jerseys. It gets confusing mostly for those in house. Right. We get asked that every Jackie Robinson day with everybody wearing number 42. How do you keep track of the players? <laughs> right. We just hope they don't bat out of order. Figaro trying to end the St. Louis sixth inning. Soft fly ball. Aoki coming in. Can't make the catch and it bounces in. To the stands. No, it doesn't. Ball's still alive down there. A run's coming home, and Craig goes in the third with a triple. The ball took an awkward bounce and hit off the top of the rail and back into fair territory. Yeah. And another run in for the Cardinals. And RBI on a flare down the line and right that was barely fair. And I think Aoki might have thought it went into the seats. Maybe it bounced, maybe a fan touched it. Okay, looking into the stands, Gomez. Gomez is, uh, you know, telling the umpire the ball was touched by a fan, which would have not allowed the run to score. And so, Oki, okay, not sure if he gets a piece of it, but not. You can't really tell there if a fan touched it. Oki okay, never got a glove on it. Well, the umpire down the right field line, Todd Tishner, had a good look, and that ball off the top of the rail. And so a softly hit triple is in the books for Alan Craig and another RBI. So a 9 to 1 game right now. That's the first run given up in relief by Figaro. This one hit hard by Molina, but pulled foul. Molina won for three, has an RBI. Had an RBI single back in the second inning. 328 leads all catchers with 38 hits on the season. Figaro hits the outside corner. A ball and two strikes now to the St. Louis catcher. And this one hits Molina. And he's shaking that right hand. Don't know if it hit him in the hand or the wrist. He's in some pain. Training staff to come out and take a look at him along with Mike Matheny, the manager. And trying to come inside, just left it a little bit too far inside. You see Molina started to offer at the baseball, hit him on the backhand, you know, that right hand, and got him on the wrist. Shaking it off and at first base right now. So runners at first and third for the Cardinals. That brings up David Freeze. So Figaro got the first two batters quickly, then gave up a single to Holiday, and then a blue triple to Craig for an RBI. Now has hit Molina.
David Freeze 0 for 3 in this game. But he wears the tag of being 0 for 2 back in the second inning. Made two of the three outs, the first and the last. But he certainly has had his share of base hits in this series. Only well, seems to swing the bat well when the Brewers are around. He was six for 11 coming into this game in the previous three games against Milwaukee. Another swing and a miss. One and two the count now on David Freeze. Figaro steps off again. And he wants Luke Roy to come out and figure this out. They can't get together on what they want to throw. And David Freeze has uh, been coming up empty on high fastballs today and earlier in this at bat swung to a slider down in the dirt. What do you know what to do to this guy leave a breaking pitch up in his own. Pretty good slider speed hitter. But when he's swinging a bat, it doesn't matter what you're throwing. One, two just misses off the corner. So two and two. Figaro trying to end this sixth inning. Cardinals making the most of their hits today. They have nine hits and scored nine runs, but. It's those walks, those three walks in a hit batter back in the second inning that really aided in that six run frame. High fly ball, and Gomez has it for the final out. St. Louis gets one more to get that eight run lead back. Fast delivery of the game. Reliever Figaro. Look at him run down the bases for his first major league hit and his first major league RBI. That is freaky fast. Didn't expect to swing it back today, and so far he has plated the Brewers' only run. And a big hand from his teammates in that dugout. And the Clements Racing Sausages were at it today. The big relay going on moments ago. And of course, the uh, 
the adult sausages making sure that the mini sausages get their chance. And what a tight finish it turned out to be here this afternoon. Good family atmosphere. Look how close this is. Does the Polish get it? Yes. Photo finish. And Ricky Weeks leads off the Brewer half of the sixth inning with a base hit. Good to see Ricky Weeks on base for Milwaukee. Lead off single against Garcia, who has really did a nice job in the fifth inning with those three consecutive infield hits. Didn't allow the Brewers to get any more than that one run. Well, he got a Ramos Ramirez with the bases loaded on. I think it looked like about three or four consecutive breaking balls and did not make a mistake with any of them, ended up striking them out. Here's the Brewer catcher, Jonathan Lucroy, 0 for 2 in this game. Two twenty eight on the season for Luke. Sophia pointed out the. Uh, much needed day off yesterday according to, to Ron Renneke trying to push the right buttons for certain players on this team. But Luke entered the game yesterday. As a pinch hitter and played it a couple of runs for Milwaukee. Chance for a double play for the Cardinals and they pick it up six four three. So the leadoff base hit eliminated by the double play. And that's one thing that Jaime Garcia, you know, does well. I mean, he does many things well, but the ground ball out is something that he's able to get a lot. I mean, he leads all of baseball in ground ball out percentage, almost 75 percent of his outs are ground balls. Over a three to one ground ball to fly ball ratio. Although today the Brewers have been lifting some pitches in the air. And have had a number of fly ball outs. And Gomez loses his bat into the screen behind home plate and will retrieve it on his own. Carlos Gomez, our Wisconsin Lottery Powerball home run count. Was Gene Segura's home run, number two, and then. It was Gomez. A lot of home runs flying on this homestand for Milwaukee. A couple more yesterday. Gomez a big cut and a miss again. Now down two strikes to Garcia. Brewers came into this game giving up the most homers in the majors here at Miller Park. 60 home runs coming into this game. And one earlier by Holiday as Gomez strikes out to end the Brewers sixth inning.
by the Wisconsin Lottery, reminding you to please play responsibly. And by Miller Lite, it's not just a good time, it's Miller time. Another great crowd on hand here. Corey Hart bobblehead throwback to the 1913 Milwaukee Brewers out of the American Association. And Michael Gonzalez now getting set to take the mound out of the bullpen for Milwaukee. The Brewers third pitcher of the day. Yeah, really started and really has turned his season around. Pitched last night, tossed a perfect eighth inning. That included a strikeout. Has been unscored upon in 13 of 15 appearances this year. And he'll face Descalso right out of the gates. Left-handed pitching Gonzalez to the left-handed hitting Descalso. That's three outings for Gonzalez. Only given up two total hits. Cardinals with a 9 1 advantage over Milwaukee, and they took the steam out of the Brew Crew back in the second inning. You can take the steam out when you come up with a six run inning, and then couple that with the fact that Jaime Garcia has been spot on out on the mound. Another one fouled back. Gonzalez rocks and delivers the 2 2. And does Descalso check his swing? No, he cannot hold up. He is rung up by the third base umpire, Bill Miller. That second consecutive at bat, Descalso has been rung up by the third base umpire. So he goes to the dugout, couple of walks, couple of strikeouts today. Got to bring up the shortstop, Pete Cosma. Two for three in this game. Gonzalez in his first year in a Brewer uniform. Pitched for the Nationals a year ago. And Gorzolani teammates. Prior to that. Split the 2011 season with Baltimore and Texas. Of course, we'll see the Rangers in here on Tuesday and Wednesday for a brief period of interleague play. I see the third base coach. Chris Maloney and normally it's Jose Okendo down there. He's not with the ball club on personal business and he's normally the first base coach. Now Benji Molina the brother of Yadier Molina is at first base. Now Benji Molina the older brother of both Jose Molina and Yadier is the uh, assistant hitting coach for St. Louis holds the same responsibilities that John Shelby holds down for the Brewers. Quite a family, that Molina family. Three big league catchers with Benji Molina, the older of the three of them, oldest of the three of them. And a cold strike three on Cosmo. So two down for Gonzalez via the strikeout. Jose Molina currently a catcher with the Tampa Bay Rays, so two of the three still. Active in the big leagues, and their father, Benji Sr., was inducted into the Puerto Rico Amateur Baseball Hall of Fame back in 2002. So, quite the uh, athletic family of the Molinas. Have a lot to talk about around the holidays, I would imagine. And uh, all having a 
a hand with the team Puerto Rico success this year in the WBC as well. Heavily influenced. This one may have skimmed off of the Gonzalez, but Segura takes care of him for the out, and that'll end the seventh half for St. Louis. I have to check on Gonzalez, but first it's God bless America as we do each Sunday across Major League Baseball. From the Brewers Guest Relations Department. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies. To the oceans, white with foam, God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless America, my home, sweet Brewers fans sticking around, soaking up the sun. The roof is open, so why not enjoy the beautiful day? And the Brewers going all the way back in the vault for these uniforms today, commemorating the 1913 championship team. Corey Hart's bobblehead also wearing the uniform here. And Brewers fans weighing in on which is your favorite Brewers jersey. Today's jersey's got 11% of the vote. And no surprise, the retro ball and glove look got 59%. The gold jersey, 16%, and the current look, 14%. So, Rock, your look gets the win. You probably were the best-looking guy that wore that uniform. Thank you, Sophia. That's nice of her to say. I've never been told that before. I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> you believe it? It's a good one. Best line of the day, by the way. Oh, yeah, man, I'll tell you what. And uh, there's a base hit for Betancourt to lead off the Brewer half of the seventh inning. You are... You are sporting a great look with the bow tie today, though. Trying to go back to the uh, you know, yeah. 1913 era. I mean, you get the uh, the bow tie, the suit, maybe the top hat. I like it. I, I love the, the the shots. You know, the still shots and the. Uh, should I take my glasses off? I'm sorry. See now you're even better looking than Sophia would ever imagine with yeah. those sunglasses on. Behind those Foster Grants, right? <laughs> But, Looks uh, good though the bow tie. I love that. I mean they're all dressed in uh, suits and top hats and uh, a very respectful crowd these days. Or I should say back in those days and 
But uh, baseball and uh, society's come a long way since those days, have they not? I believe athletic logo wear has taken over. Right. Team wear. I mean, didn't, didn't see many kids at the ballpark back in those days. Alex Gonzalez pinch hitting. They tried for a double play, but they only get the out to Gonzalez. There was nobody at second base. Nobody standing on the bag. Descalso took the throw, but he was about five feet behind second base. I'm not sure what's going on here with the Cardinals, but they do get an out. Should have been a double play. Cosby just stops. Descalso's behind the bag, but they still get the out. That's a one to four to three put out on Alex Gonzalez. I'm not sure why Cosmos stopped. Very strange. Don't know if I've seen that one before. But the Cardinals do pick up an out and a runner out at second base for Milwaukee. That brings up Nori Aoki, the leadoff hitter for the Brew Crew. Takes a swing at that first pitch and just foul down the right field line. Aoki 0 for 3 in this game. He's due for a hit. But here's what's really changed, you know, going back to the 1913 look of the fans that you're talking about and how you used to attend games dressed right. up yeah. is yeah. nowadays everyone and, and to the credit of what the Brewers have been able to do under Mark Antanasio, everyone's wearing their team's gear to right. the games. Yeah. Well, you see them all decked out. Guys in the top hats and suits and yeah, I think that's the way everybody walked around back in those days. Yep, you're right. We didn't see many shorts back in those days or you know cutoffs and things like that but uh, I'm glad about that actually. <laughs> Okie grounds out Betancourt to third. Looking for a weekend laugh well Paul image top 10 tweets should fit the bill read the best of Wisconsin athletes on social media now at Fox Sports Wisconsin dot com. Yeah the look is uh, the look has changed with the team uniforms and how people dress to attend games and it's fun to see the evolution. Everybody casual but the announcers. Yeah, why is that? It's the way it is, I guess. Here's Gene Segura one for three. Makes our voices louder when we're dressed in a coat and tie, doesn't he? More pronounced. You're more believable when you're dressed up. <laughs> Segura tries to shoot one through the hole, but to no avail, he grounds out. Real through seven, it's nine to one, St. Louis. Pushing over the Brewers right now. They scored six runs back in that second inning. Alan Craig, two for three, a double and a triple, four more RBIs for him. And Alfredo Figaro, his first major league hit in RBI that came back in the fifth inning for the Brewers. But the uh, the Brewer relief pitcher is the only one that's been able to play to run so far in this game for Milwaukee. And uh, I guess that's a sign of the tough times that have been going on here, the Brewers. Trying to avoid 
a five game losing streak but they trail here and it's starting to get late. John Axford out on the hill for Milwaukee right now and a host of changes by the Brewers some significant ones Blake Lolly will be catching now for Milwaukee so he's behind the plate and the Brewers starting catcher Jonathan Lucroy goes over to first base. Alex Gonzalez who came in as a pinch hitter last half inning now playing third and Betancourt now in for Ryan Braun in left field. So a little experimenting going on for Ron Renicky. And we're not done yet. I believe Jeff Bianchi is at second base now. Right. And Lolly will be in uh, Ricky Weeks spot in the batting order. So Ricky's out. And John Axford. As we anticipated maybe getting an inning here to work out some of the issues that he's been having. 15th game for Axford bigger and run average he's 0 and 3. Tossed the scoreless ninth inning on Friday. Against these Cardinals here at Miller Park. Let's see center field short and right are the only defensive changes that didn't occur here. Actually Lolly is going to be in bronze spot in the batting order my mistake. All right to the eighth we go. John Jay top of the order leading off for St. Louis. Pitcher spot is Ricky Week spot in the batting order. Don't mind me thinking out loud. I hear you. We'll get it. Hopefully the Brewers can go through that uh, that new batting order a couple of times and get back in this game. So after all that it was a double switch for Ron Renicky. <laughs> How deep can you go in a double switch? Right. That's the question. Very deep. John Jay's been on base a couple of times, has one hit. He was also hit by a pitch. That was a, a crucial at bat back in that second inning. Marco Estrada had two strikes on John Jay and two outs and hit him. And then all of a sudden the wheels fell off. St. Louis would score six runs after that. And then we talked about two out RBIs for the Cardinals on our, our pregame show today. Seven of the nine runs for the Cardinals came with two outs in today's game. Yep, that big sixth inning by St. Louis. Now Axford works the count full against John Jay to lead off the seventh inning. John Axford pitched against the Cardinals on Friday night tossed a scoreless ninth inning. And a base hit to lead things off. Here in the eighth. They come out to Miller Park for the Brewers Spring Madness. May 20th through the 22nd. Say 50% on select seats. Hot dogs and small sodas are just a dollar each. For tickets, visit Brewers.com slash madness. Next homestand. After a 10 game road trip for Milwaukee. It's kind of strange how the uh, the play at Miller Park is panned out. They're coming in at nine and nine on the season. They could have two five game losing streaks if uh, things stay the way they are today, which is hard to believe. Only three home stands in. Shane Robinson, one for two. But you have nothing left to do but to try to finish up the last two games here at Biller Park before you go on that big road trip you were talking about and then make up for it on the road. And the Brewers had a, a schedule that was very home friendly early on before this 10 game road trip and really did not take advantage of it. They lost today and they're nine and ten five and six on the road. There's a game under 500 coming in 
four and a half behind the Cardinals. And right now John Axford is having a tough time getting things rolling his way here in this half of the eighth inning. First two reach a base hit and then a walk. Well, you got two catchers now having a chat with John Axford. You got Lolly and first baseman Luke Croy coming in. And it looked as though Luke Corey was doing most of the talking in that <laughs> discussion. And a pat on the back and then off to first base. There's Tony Cruz. Yes, he's here. Looks like he might be getting some playing time. And for those who don't know, the Cardinals do have a backup catcher, and that's him. Yeah, he's made one start this year. Tough hard, duty. Hard to believe. Yeah. Here's Jermaine Curtis. He'll be pinch hitting for Shane Robinson. I should say Matt Holiday. Robinson aboard on the walk, and John Jay led off the inning with a base hit. A host of changes by both clubs. With the Brewers making a bunch of defensive changes. Six to open up this eighth inning. John Axford though trying to right the ship here this week he had a rough start in the middle of the week blowing his second save against the Pirates they hit him hard late in that game on Wednesday afternoon here at Miller Park. He was rolling along before then no doubt about it. He's starting to throw that breaking pitch for strikes the slider and the curveball and because of that he started to show signs of coming back. And lately it's been a, uh, a tough stretch for him. Another ball delivered by Axford two and one the count. See if he can get Curtis to. Get into a double play. Take some pressure off here in the eighth inning. Curtis waits. Axford delivers. It's outside again. Three and one. It's Brandon Kinsler starting to get loose in that Brewer bullpen. And Axford loads the bases. Nobody out here in the eighth. The base hit and two walks. The seventh walk issued by the Brewers today. And the first two since Marco Estrada exited the ball game. We well, can learn more about the basics of baseball. Stay tuned. The Brewers live post game as we break down the techniques and strategies of the game in tonight's today's post game instructional. We'll talk about blocking the plate and uh, we had a chance to do that with Charlie O'Brien. You guys have put together some uh, good instructionals during spring training that we've been able to filter in. Yeah, no, those were actually uh, filmed during fantasy camp. So there you go. Even the further guys, back. Bunch of the guys at fantasy camp uh, were willing to uh, help us out with some of that stuff, and they're going to be fun to watch throughout the summer. There's Alan Craig with the bases loaded, nobody out, and John Axford trying to work out of a rough start to this frame here with the Cardinals batting. Well, Charlie O'Brien uh, owns and operates a game farm in Oklahoma. Game farm. A big uh, you know, bow hunter, and he's yeah. actually got a show on a competing network, which I'm not uh, allowed to talk about. But uh, again, he is a big hunter, big game hunter, and uh, travels around all over the place uh, doing his thing. It's a pretty nice retirement from baseball. Yeah. 
a pretty good life to live play the game and then uh, then retire and do something like that that you probably love equally or more. He's got all kinds of uh, antlered animals that uh, you can go out and uh, and get if you choose. Greg hits it hard right field. Oki coming in makes the catch and runners can advance. So the first out of the eighth inning a fly ball out to right. And Tony Cruz who we saw a moment ago trotting in from the Cardinals bullpen. Will grab a bat and go hit for Yadier Molina and take his spot behind the plate for the rest of the game. As you mentioned rock just one game started on the season. Yeah. He's only got five at bats and here we are in uh, the first week in May. This is only the sixth game he has played against the Brewers spanning now a third season as the backup for Bolina. Right. Divisional opponent. Play more than anybody else. Kind of reminds you of the backup catcher to uh, Johnny Bench. Do you remember who that was? I have no clue. Bill Plummer. Bill Plummer. Hardly ever played. Johnny Bench never took a day off. This one gets past Lolly, and runners were on the move and then quickly retreat. And it looked like it hit a portion of the cement back there and bounced quickly back to Lolly. CB Buckner, very fortunate that didn't uh, get him. Here it comes. Look out. A little bit late getting up for that high pitch. Well, he hasn't caught much. First time he's been in the game behind home plate for Milwaukee. Of course, he has been warming, uh, warming pitchers up in the bullpen, trying to stay sharp, but it's tough. And this one slapped in the right a base hit by Cruz one run will come home for the Cardinals. Bases remain loaded. It is now 10 to 1 St. Louis. Take a look at our Miller light what's on tap for the Brewers after the day off tomorrow a short two game interleague series against the Rangers. And there's a look at the pitching matchups Grimm against Peralta on Tuesday night and then Holland and Loesch on Wednesday night Our free game coverage here on Fox Sports Wisconsin both nights starts at 630. And there's going to be a pitching change here John Axford is out. Pending a pitching change this copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Milwaukee Brewers Baseball Club and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form 
and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Milwaukee Brewers. Brandon Kitzler now takes over here in the eighth inning with one down and the bases loaded for John Axford. Yeah, two and oh record 13th appearance he's allowed the one home run that came to Carlos Beltran on Friday night two innings on Friday a couple of runs at home run to Beltran and a 584 earned run average. So the bases are loaded for the St. Louis Cardinals. The latest to get a hit was Tony Cruz over there at first base. Just slapped a single into right field to play to run with the bases loaded, and they remain that way for David Freeze. Freeze 0 for 4. Kinsler delivers another strike. So quickly ahead. 0 and 2. Nobody warming up in that St. Louis bullpen. So you would imagine Garcia is going to be set to come back out. His pitch counts pretty good on a cold third strike. So Freeze is out. Oh, perfect pitches by Brandon Kinsler on the outside corner to David Freeze. Not much you're going to do with that. Here comes Daniel Descalso. Two walks, two strikeouts on the day. Who are the second baseman? Interesting to see if uh, Yaneski Betancourt gets a fly ball. I don't remember him ever being in the outfield. I don't think he played any outfield in spring training. I don't recall. Of course, he was only there a couple of days. The Brewers acquiring him very late, just before the regular season. Well, he's never played first. March. Never played first. Never played third. He's done well in both of those spots, and now they're throwing him out in left field. It's all about versatility with uh, with everyone on this roster really I mean you think of the move that they made to bring Jeff Bianchi up and they're trying to do the same thing with him. Be versatile in the infield and be able to play at least one of the outfield spots. Remember a couple of years ago uh, they threw Craig Council out in the left field he got a fly ball handled it beautifully. He handles a lot pretty well the first time around. Yes sir. Broadcasting playing left. Little chopper to short. Only plays over to first base. And all they need is that final out. And Kitzler comes in and does the job.
bottom of the eighth inning. Mark Concanon and Jerry Augustine getting you ready for Brewers Live post game. And Augie, once again, as they have done the entire series, the Cardinals doing lots of damage early today. Yeah, there's so much talk about the Cardinals starting pitching, how good they are, the best ERA in all of baseball. But it all starts getting something done early in the ball game. The Cardinals have done a good job outscoring the Brewers 17 to 3. In those first three innings, just a total mismatch. We'll hear from Ron Renicky after the game. Also, our post game instructional that Bill Schroeder taped with Charlie O'Brien down in Arizona, blocking the plates. Rock, uh, did you assist in the blocking at all? No, I just sat there and uh, watched Charlie do it beautifully. You know, Charlie and I were teammates a couple of years with the Brewers. Pop foul by Lolly to lead off the bottom of the eighth inning. Our shining moment is brought to you by Marshfield Clinic. And it's the pitcher, Alfredo Figaro. He has played in Milwaukee's only one. <laughs> it's hard to believe. Out of the bullpen, getting in at bat, and then did a nice job in middle relief. A couple of strikeouts for Figaro. Two and two thirds innings, only one run, a couple of strikeouts, and a good day all the way around for Alfredo Figaro today. So now Jeff Bianchi is going to get a second at bat here in this ball game. I should say first now he came in for Ramirez in the sixth inning as a defensive replacement and he pops out to the second baseman at shallow right. So a couple of quick outs that brings up. Now Martin Maldonado he will hit for Ricky Weeks. Bench gets emptied out here now for Ron Renneke, and why not? So when Weeks went out the uh, on the double switch, this is now the pitcher spot, and our Wendy's at the plate for Martin Maldonado. His first plate appearance of the game. Yeah, Garcia's pitch count is uh, only 94 right now. So you figure he has a pretty good shot to finish this game. His last start against Cincinnati, he went eight innings and gave up only one run. So he's on a roll, looking to go four and one. Now you see these Cardinals pitchers going deep in the ball games. We talked about it earlier. How the starters recorded the first 18 wins. And yesterday was the first time that the a reliever actually recorded a win. And that was Manus. And he was just called up to the majors on Fridays. So you take a look at the pitch count by innings for Garcia. That fifth inning struggled a bit, but in that fifth inning only gave up that one run three of those hits were infield hits. So the Brewers really have had a difficult time hitting the ball hard and putting some significant type of offense together against Garcia. Not the way we're used to seeing him. Well, he threw the baseball well his last time out against Milwaukee. Remember that uh, game the Brewers had that big comeback late. That was Garcia's start. Did not allow a run in seven innings, and the Brewers able to come back. That ended the uh, scoreless inning streak at 32, and then they went on to win nine straight games. So with the uh, the win streaks, the losing streaks right now by Milwaukee early on, there could easily carry the tag and the label team streak. Like to get another winning streak together ASAP, though. You have to imagine that uh, losing within a division against the Cardinals, too. This is uh, going to start to wear on this team a little bit. You don't want to believe you can't beat this team. You're going to see him so many times. We're through eight. It's 10 to 1, St. Louis.
Back here at Miller Park. We go to the top of the ninth inning. Good crowd on hand here was Corey Hart bobblehead giveaway. The Brewers wearing throwback uniforms to 1913 to honor the Brewers American Association championship team. Team that played in Milwaukee for 50 years before they got the Boston Braves to move here in the early 50s and get Major League Baseball in the house. And then after the Braves went to Atlanta, they went through that period through the late 60s into 1970 before the Seattle Pilots came to Milwaukee after just one season out west. And the Brewers have been home here in Milwaukee ever since. Tom Gorzolani to make his 17th appearance out of the bullpen. Hey, he's been very good from the beginning of the season and through the first week in May. 17th appearance for Gorzolani, a 1 0 record. And he suffered his first blown save of the season. That was yesterday against the Cardinals. Gave up a couple of runs in an inning of work. And still has that ERA at 2.63. He'll face the shortstop Pete Cosma to lead off the ninth inning. You know the Brewers will. Welcome a day off tomorrow. Deep in the hole. Segura long throw and got him. Nice scoop over there by Jonathan Lucroy. Catcher by trade. First baseman here late. Yeah, Luke uh, Manning first base and all new to just about everybody. Betancourt out at left field. You got Lucroy at first base. So Ron Redigan just trying to figure out what he has and maybe using a tough day at the ballpark to test some players in some spots that they've never been at before. Well it's one thing to say they're versatile it's another thing you know you got to play it on the major league level too especially if you haven't done that before moving around different positions Ty Wigington now pitch hitting for the pitcher Jaime Garcia who is now done for the day eight strong innings against Milwaukee. Only gave up that one run. Struck out three. Eight hits really did not come back to haunt him at all. Well, eight hits, and uh, as you mentioned, three of them infield hits. He was really not able to center on Jaime Garcia very well. A couple of hard hit balls. Carlos Martinez warming up in that St. Louis bullpen. He'll come in to finish up the ninth inning. Strikeout for Gorzolani. Wigington is down. Two outs here in the ninth inning. Top of the order in John Jay. He's been on base three times in this game. He scored two runs. And tight to John Jay. Brewers have used everybody off the bench except for Logan Schaefer in this game. Several regular starters out, including Braun and Weeks. Three different players have mined third base in this game. 
It was good to see Ramirez get another start today. But as the plan, three at bats in in out. But you see Alex Gonzalez over there. And this one hits John Janey, throws his bat in disgust. Taking a long look at Gorzolani. Gorzolani taking a look back at him and Blake Lolly walking up the infield grass. No, that's making what sure nothing stirs. Yeah, that's what you're supposed to do. And I'll tell you, Gorzolani not even close on this pitch. And gets Jay right in the side and uh, he upset, fires the bat down, but walks to first base. On a 3 0 pitch. Did a nice job controlling his emotions right there. It's kind of a quick glance over to Gorzolani. Here's Shane Robinson. One hopper Segura. They'll get the lead runner. And the Cardinals are retired here in the ninth inning. Why not, right? It's a beautiful day. The roof is open here. Always great to come to a baseball game. Got the sombreros on. Cinco de Mayo day here. Everything looking good except that score for your Brewer fan. Brewers uh, on the verge of losing their fifth straight game, trailing 10 to 1. As we head to the bottom of the ninth inning, and Ty Wigington stays in the game over at third base. New pitcher is going to be Carlos Martinez in his major league debut on Friday against the Brewers, pitching an inning of relief. Young man, only 21 years old, and he can flat bring it. Got a big arm. Gave up base hit and an inning of work. His first appearance on Friday against Milwaukee, his major league debut. He's got some young, impressive arms in that. Cardinal bullpen right now. So he gets set to take the mound. Like Matheny in that St. Louis dugout, about to do something that no other. St. Louis Skipper's been able to do, or a team for that matter, against the Brewers, and that's go for a four game sweep against Milwaukee. In many, many ways, he has pushed all the right buttons in this four game series. Only his second year as a big league skipper, last year taking the Cardinals to the playoffs in his first season at the helm, taking over for Tony LaRussa. Yep, and never managed at any level and has done a very good job, really. Cardinals really haven't missed a beat.
Luke Roy to short. And there's out number one. So Carlos Gomez entered the day as the National League's leading hitter. Doubled and scored the Brewers' only run back in the fifth inning. That's another chance to keep that batting average up. 371 as he enters the batter's box right now. And 371 and with power. On base percentage over 400, 421. Amazing numbers, 371. A year ago, hit 260 for the Brew Crew. Something that he could be 110 points higher than that right now, and he's become quite a consistent hitter. And when you consider his first uh, 10 games or so, he was really having a tough time scuffling out of spring training. I'd like to know what his numbers are since that rough start after that day off that Ron Renicki gave him. Well, for Gomez, he extends his hitting streak to 12 games today with that double. But over his last 19 coming into today, just under 500. I mean, that's quite a stretch of games, batting 500. Right, over his last 19 games, 492, so I guess my uh, question was answered. In Mike Vassallo's game notes, I should have looked before I mentioned it. You can find anything in there. Absolutely. Mike Vassallo and uh, John Steinmiller, Ken Spindler. Great information every day for us. And Gomez strikes out. So two down here in the ninth inning. That'll bring up Uni Betancourt. Well, Martinez doing right there what he does best, and he can strike out. Almost any batter he faces, he has a very high strikeout rate in the minor leagues. You can see why 99 miles an hour that last fastball. So, young man's got a big arm, he's got a pretty good slider. It's been the one thing the Brewer hitters have noted this season against the St. Louis Relief Corps is the velocity that. Obviously they face coming in and it, it could start as early as the seventh inning when you've got relievers coming in in the high 90s the way the Cardinal pitchers have been able to put together. Yeah, some of these guys are. Uh, just got here Manus. Got this kid Martinez. Good arms. Mojica's done a nice job in the closers role lately and Rosenthal. Jason Mata was announced during this series that he would have Tommy John surgery. But they go right back to the minors and dip into the well and produce a lot of quality good pitching obviously between starters and relievers. And they sent their closer down Mitchell Boggs and they bring this kid up and he's been pretty impressive. Betancourt with a couple of singles today. As his batting average up to 280 right now. Started as the Brewer first baseman today and is uh, currently listed as the left fielder. And according to Mike Vassallo, the first time he's ever played in the outfield in the big leagues. 
We were hoping to see a put out out there, but it didn't happen. Yeah. Here's the 2 2. Round ball to short. And that'll do it. It has been all St. Louis. Now, four games in a row. They have swept the Brewers for the first time in a four game series, and they make a big statement here in the capper, winning 10 to 1. For more on tonight's game, let's send it out now to Mark and Cannon for Brewers Law. Craig, thanks for the cards. Beat the group the fourth straight time for the sixth time in seven tries this season. Brewers Live will break it down for you next in the post game story. The Cardinals scoring early to get the win or on field instructional. Ron Reddick with a news conference. All next on Brewers Live.